In this presentation, we are going to look at Venn diagrams and how they are used in set theory. So essentially what we're going to do is shade in areas of Venn diagrams that match these mathematical descriptions. So we're going to use the uh, set operations. We're going to use U, union. We're going to use this symbol here, intersection. And we're going to use this uh, superscript, and that means the complement. Or, as we might sort of say, not. Okay, so let's begin. So let's look at the first example here. This is the complement of A union B. So I'm going to first uh, off discuss what the complement of A is. The complement of A is anything that is outside of A, including the relevant regions of B. So all of that there. But what we're also going to do is consider B for a second as well. So we have B here. Let's use red pen there. And essentially, anything that is enclosed by the region B, which I'm going to put here in red, just to highlight it, is also, part, uh, is also to be included in this. So what I'm going to do is actually shade in a bit more here. So essentially the area where we are particularly interested in is this area here that is enclosed by the black line I'm about to draw here. Sorry, outside of this black line. So anything in the rectangle outside of this black line is the uh, fits the description up there of complement of A union B. So that's the first example here. Let's move on to the next one. So the intersection of A and the complement of B. So essentially the complement of B is anything outside of uh, B, which is anything outside of this circle here. But we can also have to consider that it has to be part of A also. So anything that is outside of um, this circle, but it also has to be in, uh, enclosed by A. So let's draw in the uh, remaining area that is enclosed by A. So it's actually again here in black, this area here is what we have, is the parts of the complement of B that are part of A. So it's actually this region here. So it's actually the complement of the last example. So here, this that's it there. So that's the answer for that one. So we're going to move on now to the next one here. And C and D, the two examples we have now are both very interesting. So first off, let's look at the intersection of A. The intersection of A is this region here. It is the region of the universal set that is enclosed by both A and both B. So it's everything inside this red area. But we're asked for the complement of this. So essentially what we're looking for is everything outside of this. So essentially anything outside that red line. So there we have it there. Oops, went outside the universal set there. Anything outside that red line in the universal set is corresponds to the complement of A intersection B. Okay, so that's that one. Now just be mindful of that when we get on to the next one here. The complement of A union the complement of B. So everything that's outside of A and everything that's outside of B and the union of those two. So everything that's outside A, well let's uh, start off here and consider everything, just, the, just, just everything outside A and B so far. That's definitely going to be part of our solution. Okay. Now, but 
everything, let's say everything outside of A, okay, so this is also going to be part of our solution if it's outside of A, that the parts that are part of B only will be included, but everything that's outside of B, so we're actually going to include the parts of A that are not part of B, okay. So what have we got left with? It's this region again here. The intersection of A and B are the is what's left over. So just to be clear, the answer is actually the shaded area, but it's the sort of we sort of might identify that the um intersection area is probably what is distinguishable right now. I'm just gonna scroll back for a second just to look at the last answer. There we have it there. So it's actually identical. So the, the expressions C and D are identical. I'm going to come back to that now in the end. So we're going to do E and F. And again, E and F have a very similar type of uh, relationship. First off, let's look at the union, the intersection, sorry, the union of A and B and the complement of that. So first off, what's the... Um, a union B, well it's everything enclosed by this red line. This is anything that's part of A or part of B. And the complement of that is everything outside of that in the universal set. So it's the remainder of the universal set. So it's everything outside here. So that one's straightforward enough. So let's go on to F. So the complement of A intersection the complement of B. So the, everything that's outside of A and outside of B. So it has to fulfill both. It has to be outside of A and outside of B. So let's just look at outside of A first off. And again, everything outside A and B. Gives us a nice starting place to work from. So anything outside of A and the intersection of everything outside of B. Well, this is in A. Uh, it's it's in A, so we can't have that. This is in A and B, so we can't have that. And this is in B, this region here, so that we can't have that. So it's everything outside of a and B. And again, this is actually identical to the last example. So again, just to be clear, it's the shaded area in blue. So it's everything outside the two circles. So that is uh, how we would shade those in. But I'm just going to sort of uh, go back to one point at the end. The two examples we have here We've found that these two expressions are equivalent to each other, and these two expressions are equivalent to each other. Now, this is actually what is known as De Morgan's Laws. And they are vitally important in properly understanding set theory. And uh, as a further to that, they are quite important in computer programming when you're trying to do a uh, program. Uh, very tricky operations. Anyway, that ends our presentation.